All right, so let's say you've got a pendulum. So you've got this sort of fixed pivot point and then a stick coming out that can rotate around there with maybe we can imagine the stick is massless and then there's a some object that has mass at the end. So you can have rotation about this fixed pivot point. Um, and you really need to imagine that this is a pendulum connected by a stick, not a string, a rigid stick. Um, you know, a uh, a string can provide tension if you like try to pull uh, on the string, then it'll pull back and provide tension. But um, there would be no pushback when you compress it, right? Where a stick will also provide tension, but if you try to push a stick and compress it, then it'll push back at you. So imagine that it's uh, a thing on a stick and it's swinging you around. So that's our pendulum. And if you let's say this is the, the vertical, so gravity is in this direction, then if you call this angle here theta, um, that can be your dynamical variable. So you can ask, uh, you know, how does theta evolve in time? Given different initial conditions, what happens? And you end up with a second order differential equation, right? So this is what it ends up being. So theta prime prime plus a constant times uh, Sorry, I had to cut that out. Uh, I gave you the linearized version. Uh, theta prime prime plus a constant times the sine of theta equals zero. So here theta is our unknown function of t. It's like our x of t. So a single second order differential equation. And here this constant, g is the gravitational, the, the acceleration due to gravity on the surface of the Earth, and l is the length of this stick is l. So interestingly, the mass of this thing, which you might call m or something, never shows up. And uh, I don't want to focus too much on how to, how to derive this, so I'm sort of skipping that, but there are many ways to derive it. Um, probably the simplest being use Newton's second law, um, which will tell you something about how the position of this thing in space uh, is going to change in time. So initially it tells you that mass times acceleration of this thing uh, equals the sum of the forces, and the f there are two forces. There's uh, gravity, and there's um, the force that is needed to keep this thing on its constrained path, which is to be going in a circle like that, to, st to stay on a circle of radius L, basically. So there are those two forces, gravity and the force that keeps it constrained, which um, I guess materially would be uh, as forces in the stick, either like tension or compression. So you write down Newton's second law and then you uh, try to convert what you've written down into something that tells you about sort of the angular acceleration rather than the uh, linear acceleration of this thing. And then that tells you about theta prime prime. There is a mass term showing up everywhere and the mass term cancels and you end up with this. Okay, so let's take this as our starting point, that this is the uh, exact uh, differential equation that governs the motion of this pendulum um, if the pendulum is frictionless. Uh, and and uh, if you assume this is a stick and whatever. One thing we're not doing that we might have done before that I think you did in a homework problem previously is we're not replacing this immediately by theta, at least not yet. Um, one thing we did before when we looked at this is we said, well, as long as theta is small, sine of theta is close to theta. And so we were making a small angle approximation. Now we're going to think about not necessarily doing that and trying to build a global picture. Actually, we will make approximations, but focused on lots of different points. So the first thing that you're probably thinking now is, how in the world is this one of these things? Um, first of all, it's second order. And secondly, um, it's not a system of differential equations. It looks like it's just one differential equation with one unknown function, theta of t, right? Well, remember, we can convert uh, second order differential equations into first order systems of differential equations. So we can always uh, sort of accept a trade-off where we reduce the order, so that there's only one derivative showing up, but we increase the number of equations, the number of dynamical variables. Um, so let's do that. So how does this work? We've done this before, but not with 
uh, the variables having these names. But the way it works is define a new dynamical variable to stand for theta prime, to stand for the first derivative of theta. So that actually has a physical meaning. It's the angular acceleration. Oh, sorry, it's the angular velocity of the uh, pendulum. So a good name for that is omega. So define omega to be theta prime. So don't get confused. This is not like the omega we've used before. Uh, in many contexts previously, omega has been a constant parameter that shows up in differential equations. Now it's a dynamical variable. So you've got theta of t, an unknown function, and a second unknown function, omega of t, which, by the way, happens to be theta prime of t. That's its definition. Ah, and by the way, this is one of our two differential equations. So let me write it in the other order. Um, theta, theta prime equals omega. So equals 0 theta plus 1 omega, you see? And then our second differential equation is omega prime equals, and then what's omega prime? Well, omega is theta prime, so omega prime is theta prime prime, which equals, move this to the other side, equals g over L, negative g over L sine theta. Now, there's no way I'm going to write this as matrix, like, there's no way I can convert this to matrix times theta omega, right? I mean, maybe I can start filling in the entries of this matrix, 0, 1, but what the entries of this row, but what about this row? There's no num there are no numbers I can put here that are going to get sine theta to come out, right? That's the nonlinearity, you see? Nothing, there's nothing that goes here that makes this work. And sine, sine theta is a nonlinear function of theta. Um, if it were linear in theta, then you would have sine of a sum of things equaling the sum of the sines. But we know that sine just doesn't work that way. It's actually a lot more complicated, right? So there's the nonlinearity. It's the sine theta. So there's, there's no hope of getting this to work. But let's still package things together, just not with a, not with a matrix on the right-hand side. So let's just say theta uh, omega prime equals, now that I'm not doing things with matrices, there's no sense in writing like this. Let me just write omega equals omega and then negative g over L sine theta. And let's compress, compress the notation even more. So let, let's use x vector to stand for the theta omega pair. So you can think we, we previously were saying we have two dynamical variables, theta and omega, functions of t. Now you can say we have one vector dynamical variable that's vector valued, x of t. Um, and let, let's define f of theta omega, in other words, f of x, to be this vector valued function omega and then negative g over L sine theta. So then our differential equation system looks like this. Right? x prime equals f of x. This is an autonomous system of differential equations. So I hope you're seeing that this is just another way of writing this. There are two ways of writing the same thing, if you accept these definitions of the symbols. All right, so we have our autonomous system of differential equations. Um, and in the next video, let's look at how we can do a critical point analysis for this.